Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to see uh, how to use managed identity with Azure Functions. Uh, in this video, I also want to switch over to uh, VS Code because uh, in the past couple of videos, I have shown how to use uh, the normal Visual Studio to create Azure Functions. But uh, in this video, I just want to demonstrate it's possible to do the same in uh, VS Code. So I am going to be creating my Azure Functions uh, using C Sharp on .NET Core. So I need two extensions in order for me to do that in VS Code. One is Azure Functions. This is the first ex extension. And the second extension is uh, C Sharp. So install these two extensions from uh, Marketplace uh, and then you'll be able to start your development in VS Code. Okay, now we have a blank folder that I have opened. The first step is uh, Control Shift P. So I do Control Shift P. I'd be able to get a, a list of uh, commands that I can do. So I can say Azure function. I say create new function. So I need to create my new function. Wait for this to run. So this is the prompt I get uh, when the when you create an Azure functions on a empty folder. So let's click OK. Now I want to use C sharp for this. I am going to be using uh, HTTP trigger for this project. So I'll select HTTP trigger. I'm going to call this functions retrieve user details. I'm going to give my namespace as the trash dot functions. And this is going to use the authentication. Uh, that is a key on the function URL. It's now f uh, finished creating the uh, default function, uh, just a, a boilerplate function app. Okay, now I'm getting a prompt uh, saying that there are unresolved dependencies. Let's click restore and then wait for this to restore the dependencies. After the core dependencies have been restored, uh, we need to install two packages uh, uh, for our functions. The first one is xrm.tools.crmwebapi. This is a wrapper on top of uh, the web API. Uh, we need to install this one first. This uh, package has finished installing. Now let's install the second package that is for the managed identity. It's called Microsoft.Azure.Services.App Authentication. Let's install that. So both our packages are finished installing. And now I am going to copy paste some code uh, that I have written. So I don't want to spend time to type this out. So I am going to paste this code. So this one. Uh, what it does is it actually uses the CRM web API uh, package and it actually gets the token from um, Azure service token provider. So this is actually on the managed identity package, so which is called app authentication. So there are only two steps. Uh, once the managed identity is set up, the, get the access token for the resource, uh, that is a CDS URL. Um, that will be just your base URL for the for the instance, and then it calls the web API, does a home I request, and retrieves the system user with the same ID as the uh, result on the home I. So it's a very simple function, and uh, this is uh, what we need to test out the managed identity. Now let's deploy the app. So I'll type Control Shift P again. Control Shift P. I'm going to say deploy. Deploy to function app. I'm going to create a new function app in Azure. I'm going to give this name. Give this name. Retrieve user details demo app. I'm going to deploy this to Southeast as well. Now the deployment is complete. Let's check this on the Azure portal. I'm going to type Control Shift P again. And this time I'm going to say um, Azure function open in portal. Open in 
portal. I'm going to say retrieve user racial demo app. Okay. So here is our demo app on the Azure portal. Now we need to do two things. One is set up manage identity. Go into platform features, click on identity, and then just enable this, set the status to on, and then save it. It's going to use a system assigned manage identity. There are two kinds of manage identities. One is system assigned, another is user assigned. Uh, but we are going to use system assigned for this particular app. Okay, now it's created. The second step is to actually create a uh, app settings. So if you look at the code, I retrieve an environment variable called CDS underscore URL. So that is an app setting. So we need to create the app setting on our function app. So let's go back to our function app and go into our function uh, on, into our configuration. Now let's create an application setting for CDS underscore URL. So CDS underscore URL. I'm going to paste in my uh, base URL for the for the instance uh, for the instance uh, of uh, my my CRM instance or the CDS instance. I'm going to be pasting that in just the base URL. Click OK. Now we need to save this. The application settings is now saved. Next step is to grab the uh, client ID or application ID from Azure AD for this particular uh, managed uh, identity. Because now the function app can use managed identity, we need to grab the application ID for creating an application user in the CDS. After this, we need to grab the application ID for the managed entity. Let's type enterprise. I'm going to go into enterprise applications. I'm going to change the filter to show all applications. I'm going to apply the filter. Now let me search for the application that I created. That is uh, retrieve user details demo app. Okay, now we can see. I click on that. This is my function app that is registered in Azure AD. Let me copy this application ID to clipboard. This is the application ID that we need to use to create the application user, just like in the previous videos in CDS. So once you create a new application user with this particular ID and assign it the right security roles, you should be able to use that particular uh, function app without any sort of certificate or authentication into CDS because that particular application ID is now a user, so it is going to use that user to connect. Let's do that. Uh, once we copied it, let's now go and create an application user. After we have uh, uh, copied that application ID, uh, next step is to create the application user. Uh, so you can watch my previous video. So it is exactly the same process. All I have done is um, copy pasted because I already had created an application user. I simply swapped out the application ID. So, um, so this is the application ID we copied from the uh, enterprise applications area. Um, where is the enterprise applications area? So when you clicked on that, you were able to search that uh, uh, functions. Uh, functions application so that is the ID you should be pasting it here so once you do that you should now be able to uh, run the uh, function without any sort of uh, credentials because it's going to use this particular user let before that let me just confirm that I have assigned some security roles so I have assigned it a customer service representative so so that's that's all good now I'm going to paste in my function URL um, uh, into this window, and then let's see whether it is retrieving any sort of uh, details. So yes, it is retrieving, uh, it's making a call. So let's go back into the code. What it is doing is, it first does the who am I request using Web API, and the Web API 
has got response. So one of the property on that uh, JSON is a, a user ID. It uses the user ID and retrieves the system users. And then it also selects these following uh, attributes. Uh, so the response is a JSON. And what we see is it's working exactly like that. It is only returning the first name, last name, domain name, system user ID. Uh, and then it is using the uh, the uh, user ID on the who I request, so it's all working. So this is another approach as well to connect to CDS. Uh, just use managed identity without any sort of certificates or key walls or tokens, anything like that. Uh, this is also another way. But the disadvantage of that is uh, you can't use XRM tooling. You have to use uh, raw web, web API uh, request or use a wrapper package uh, like I used. Uh, so thank you for watching the video. Um, hopefully it was useful. Um, thank you once again.